Good day, everyone. Hello, morning. Good day. Going in a minute. Yes, yes. It's been a while. I haven't been able to attend for over a month. Okay, we need to get going a little bit early today since uh, I don't think Steve is going to be joining. Um, he dropped a note um, <clears throat> earlier this morning. Um, <clears throat> so this may be a short meeting depending on how much people have worked on. Um, Mike, were you able to do anything on this competition last week or were you busy otherwise? Yeah, I was majorly busy, but I had some dabblings. Uh, I had I looked at some notebooks here uh, with respect to how there's, there's two notebooks at the top right now, the diversity ensemble and the HMS, the blend one. So I looked at those. Yeah, the uh, the blend one is just basically an ensemble, right? Yes, yes. Um, it just kind of brings in notebooks that have previously been uh, trained. Uh, what is yeah. the second one you mentioned? Uh, the diversity ensemble by is that uh, PyTorch or uh, is that in TensorFlow? It it also is an ensemble, and it is an ex extension of the uh, discussion uh, that they had. Let me try to share my screen. So this is the new black mode, uh, dark mode. If you guys can sh uh, see my screen. Yeah, I can. Yeah, so, I can. Yeah, so this is a diversity and as all of them, uh, that has a score of 0.31. I see. Okay, and that is by Cody Null. Let's support that. And it is an extension of the, this discussion that is here. Let's go to this discussion. Okay, the topic has been deleted. Uh, it was present a day ago. I don't know. I don't know why, but okay, no issues then. Let's so go how many to model the... CC and something. I guess I it's PyTorch. Yes, it's PyTorch. Um, uh, the ResNet 34D fold one uh, folds. Uh, these are the five folds. Uh, the efficient net funds by Tim. These five folds as well. So these, these are the ResNet 34 and the FF Fission at B B zero, I think so. He's also ensembling the efficient at B ones too. So these three models, I I think so. And that's not bad. If he uh, and do you know whether uh, those are. Those seem to be six folds in each, right? Because what is the no? Uh, is it ten folds each or five folds each? Do you know? I think so. These are five folds each. Uh, the model, uh, the one, two, and three. If you can uh, see on the right, the table of contents, the mouse cursor I'm, I'm pointing to. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, what is interesting, um, uh, do you is he unsubbling them with some weights? Can you go down? Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, stay there for a minute. So he's doing 34 D26, P0 and B1 of 48, 26. Okay. That's interesting because, um, <laughs> interestingly, if you go up, my uh, I've trained, and again, I'm assuming he's combining the spectrograms and EEGs. I haven't looked at this notebook. It'd be interesting to definitely look at this notebook. But my individual scores, from I just trained B2 and B0. Mm -hmm. um, my individual B2 score is actually better than his, it's 0.34. Uh, whereas okay. his seems to be what, 0.3, I forget which one is which, but um, um, model one, I think, is ResNet, right? In his case. Yes, model one is ResNet, model two is. B0? B0 and model 3 is B1. So yes. my model B2 is actually 0 0.34. And I have a B0 at 0 0.3. Uh, B0 that I have is actually at 0 0.35. So even that is better. And my ResNet is also better at 0.36. But when I try to combine them, um, you know, my results were stuck at 0.34. So that's why I was curious what his weights were um, in combining uh, them. And it's kind of interesting that he's actually using... Um, a larger weight, if you see, for something for a model which is slightly worse than its best model, unless I'm conflating the scores with the weights um, ordering, because his B0 weight is 0.48, if I can see read correctly, mm -hmm. and his B0 score is 0.37, is that correct? Or am I, if the order wrong? Like, can we I, go up and check? Yeah, I don't know where has he mentioned the... I, I model so one. Model See, one, he just says uh, model one, right? And model yeah. one is... Uh, 34. 0. 0.41. Yes. Right. So that's why I said... Let me so try to go makes... to the notebook here, too. Uh, uh, and no, the that... one... Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, as long as it's a five. Uh, so this is this is the point four four one in interest node notebook. This is the resident thirty four. Uh, D, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So but I'm then if you go back, back to that, right? Yeah. So what is model two? Model two, if you go Let down, go is, down. Yeah, model two is, let me, this is the model two. Yeah, but uh, again, I, I'd have to check, where, is he using an ensemble of ensembles or is he just doing one ensemble? So that's unclear because the notebooks he points to from that, is he picking out particular models or is he uh you know taking because each of the reference notebooks that you're going to also seem to be ensembles yes these are ensembles right but i don't think at least as far as i can tell i um i don't think he's using those ensembles he's just kind of uh picking out, but I'm not sure because he's using the score resulting from that notebook, which would seem to imply that he's using the ensemble of all the underlying models. So 
that's what it appears to he appears to be doing but anyway i'll check it out because yeah, when so i just is... combine those then i'm not getting the score but i'm using a different set of weights so i'll have to check um so this uh seems to be an b2 uh efficient at b2 well this is an ensemble right so it's an ensemble of a bunch of things yeah mm -hmm. so it's not just one um model see that b2 but then he i assume but anyway i love to check it out because when i just ensemble um uh, models but take the same approach then they don't seem to the ensemble doesn't seem to improve the score so i have to check um because his top level notebook seems to just um use three models right my top level i mean this diversity ensemble seems to just um now is he using pytorch or is he using uh tensorflow in i think so it's it's totally in pytorch this note notebook is totally in pytorch but the data set is being created is in ten tens of flow uh those generators that he takes is tf yeah that's very weird he was using i thought above i don't know it is uh this conventy is he hasn't defined the class here it's a keras so i think so this is in tensorflow this is a uh, extension of krish theots i think so notebooks Interesting. I have to check mm -hmm. this one out to see whether he is what he is doing there. Let's go to the third model. This is the second model. Uh, the third one yeah i think he's using the ensemble so if you just go up a little bit see he is saying uh, 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 yeah if you stay there um or the the you see the pred final is pred with ensemble mm -hmm. so it looks like he is actually um even each of his yeah see there so he saying spreads make spreads i data type ke that whole thing seems to be an ensemble um of models so yeah anyway i'll check it out what this particular notebook does yeah so this so, this is this is in uh tensorflow that he's extending and the third model is in pytorch uh yes the pi pytorch version 
So he's mixing and matching between uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch, I think. How is he doing it? We will have to take a closer look at that. But the, from what I see here, the EF third data set the features this is the ResNet 1D block this is in written in using PyTorch's NN.com D1 and BashNorm1 and those layers Drop out and those layers. EEG net is using the NN ones. So this is in PyTorch. Then the inference function. This is the HMS ResNet 1D. The stage 2 folds 0 to 4, 5 folds. And there is a summation at the end here. This is This is the final sub submission, the votes, the uh, weights of those labels he has submitted here. And he is getting a score of 0 0.31 using this. Yeah, yeah this is a long notebook. The model three is resonant one. The model two is B2. And the model one looks like it's B0. Oh, it's 34D. I'm confused right now. So how has he
Yeah, I'm um, getting better results with each of my simple models, but uh, my ensemble doesn't get a whole lot better. So I'll try with uh, different uh, models to see. It may be that he is actually combining uh, Ensemble of ensembles. Yeah, this, these are totally ensemble of ensembles. And model one is an ensemble of these three: resonant 34D, efficient at B0, and efficient at B1. Model two is B2. Model three is resonant 34. And yeah. And these are in different. Uh, model three is an TensorFlow, model two is in PyTorch, model one is in ten TensorFlow. So these are the different ensemble of ensembles that he's trying to do. Yeah, that should be interesting to try. Mm. Okay. But what what about you? Uh, how did you uh, manage to get uh, uh, scores. Uh, did you add an Excel that you uh, ex extended or did you per perform no, the experiments? Uh, okay. Mine is a lot uh, simpler um, approach. Let me show you guys. So, so this is, can you see my screen? Yeah. So obviously I'm still running some ensembles, but uh, if you see the, just going back, I'll show you. So this is, these are my just um, single tenfold models using Equation Net V2S uh, gave me 0.35, but um, but these are trained on Colab, not Art um, Kaggle, because they are too big to be trained on Kaggle. They are Kaggle, uh, it runs out of memory. But I downloaded the data, loaded it on Kaggle, uh, loaded it on Colab, and trained the V2S model. And I also did. Um, the two-stage training that's talked about, the two uh, that uh, Steve talked about, which is in the first stage you train models for the situ uh, you train models, but you use the expert consensus where the number of experts is low, less than ten, and then you train again, or you reuse those trained models and you train them further with expert consensus greater than 10. Uh, and that's the way I trained it with a combination of EEG and spectrogram. So you have like eight layers going in, uh, four from spectrograms and four from EEGs converted to spectrograms. So use that and you can see that they all kind of give similar results. V2S is 0.35, B0 is 0.35. The best results I got were from E net B2, 0.34. And then I, I tried different seeds because of what uh, Steve had mentioned that, you know, for him at least different seeds seem to give better results, but for me, they didn't. And then I also tried with so here's B0, B2, and then 34D. And 34D, you can see that the score is a little bit less. Here, I was able to get 0.34 with E net B2, 0.35 with B0, and 0.35 with V2S. But my B2 is the best at 0.34. These are 10-fold models, but all of the same type. So 10 E net B2, Folds give me 0.34, just one training, one set of inference. Um, 
with 10 folds. Now, I also did it with ResNet 32-34D. Um, by the way, last week I hadn't tried it, but um, I also incorporated mix-up into the training. That didn't seem to help. It actually worsened the score, as you can see. So without mix-up, it's 0.34. With mix-up, it's 0.39. And then I tried to ensemble various of these with different weights. And you can see no matter how much I weight the weights, they're all stuck at 0.34. And I tried, you know, I'm various, uh, without any grouping or stratifying the training, I tried the ResNet that gives me the same result as when I group and stratify, which is kind of interesting. So in a way, there's no point in grouping or stratifying because it gives you the same result, regardless of whether you group and stratify or you don't group and stratify. I guess the model learns the same set of things. And then I'm running another inference with a different set of weights here. And you can see I was trying to play with the weight 0 0.8, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 for each, things like that. But regardless of what I tried, it's always stuck at around 0.34. So that's why I was curious as to what weights he's using. But again, the weights he's using are on top of an ensemble for which he is using. So it's you know two layers of ensembles that he is doing in the diversity stuff. But anyway, I'll check it out to see whether I can get some ideas from there. But I would say that the leaderboard guys are still doing something quite different, I believe, because they are at point, uh, 0.25 or something like that, which is a whole lot more a whole, you know, magnitude different from 0.31 to, if I'm not mistaken, the leaderboard uh, is at around point um, two three now. So definitely the case that, uh, you know, they're doing something quite a bit different. He was at shared notebooks last week, right, where they were using some additional data, but I haven't seen whether he's been successful using them or not. I didn't play with that yet. That's something else maybe I'll try this week. But you can see many on the leaderboard are in the 0 0.23 to 4 domain. But Chris Diot is at 0.24, but some of these leaderboard guys are at 0.23. Mm -hmm. Well, be interesting. Yeah, that they haven't revealed their secrets here. Oh yeah. Okay, any other points to discuss? I don't have anything, just trying to catch up. Yeah, we've been at it for a while. Then soon. I think we have about a month to go in this competition. I think it ends. Um, um, if I recall, somewhere in the it says 23 days to go. Let's see what's the time. Okay. Um, so we, you know, we were lucky to start on it from day one. So we've been at it for a while. Uh, oh, um, yeah, we have about a week 
uh, in April, but since we are in 16 and this is March, so we have about 15 days left this month okay. and then eight days left next month. Okay. So. But it's been a pretty interesting competition so far. Well, okay, nothing right, well. too much else to discuss. So we'll give you back your time on a Saturday morning and hopefully we'll have more people join next week and we can continue the discussions. Thanks awesome. for joining. Take care. Take care. Thanks. Oh. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.